The sequel to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor has officially been announced and I'm going to tell you today everything that there currently is to know about this game. So first off, it is called Middle Earth Shadow of War. But it's still going to be set in Mordor and I'll get more to that a bit later. Uh, it is going to be released on August 22nd, which is surprisingly early and unless you live in the UK and then it's the 25th, which is just too long of a wait in my opinion. 22nd, pretty early. 25th, you can't handle that. Uh, it's going to also be released on the PC, PS4, and Xbox One. So if you have any of those consoles, you don't have to worry. You'll be able to play this game. If you have a PC, you have to worry even less because you'll be able to run it better. Uh, and it was leaked by Target originally, which is important information because I feel like Target... Anytime, anytime I hear about a, uh, a video game being leaked by a store, I feel like it's always Target. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just subjective, subjective memory. I don't know. But I feel like Target's always the culprit. I'm surprised they still let them sell video games based on that. It was probably going to be announced anyway also, so they probably weren't that concerned. My guess, I, I, I would estimate, because they, they released a trailer, I think, two days after it was leaked. And they probably had to throw it together a little bit quick, because I'm guessing they, they were probably already working on it. And they were probably planning on releasing it, like, in a couple weeks. Not as early as this, but of course, Target rushed them to the to the point. And before letting things get out of hand, obviously the right thing to do is release a trailer or give some kind of information for this game. So I'm going to talk about the speculation first off, because that's the fun part. And then we can talk about what we know <laughs> about the game. I don't know why I'm doing it this way, but I just wrote it that way, so that's how it's going to happen. So it appears that... Uh, Right in the, uh, I, I, this is all pretty much based off of what we saw in the trailer. I'm going to link uh, the trailer in the description so that way you can go watch it after watching this video if you haven't seen it already. If you have seen it, great because you're going to be all caught up and you're going to have an idea of what I'm talking about right now. So in the trailer, we watch Talion and Celebrimbor. Uh, and of course, if you haven't played the previous game, none of this is going to make any sense. But we watch Talion and Celebrimbor forging. The uh, a, a ring of power because that's I believe that's what they said they were gonna do at the end of the last game. Additionally, we see in that scene that Talion is knocked back and Celebrimbor is knocked out of him, and then Celebrimbor, as he's walking towards him, kind of looks like he's walking towards the ring of power to snatch it from Talion. Some black shadow comes and grabs Celebrimbor, and then Talion grabs the ring, and then at the very end of the trailer, he says, "Wraith, I'm coming to get you." So, I am guessing. This is my theory, and it could be totally wrong, so don't... If it comes out and this is wrong, I, I said it, it, it could be wrong. So I got, I got the little, what are they called? Disclaimer, right in the video right there. Um, my, I'm guessing, that, and I don't, I don't think this is going to be the case, but potentially you could lose him for the entire game. It's you, just as Talion, no Celebrimbor, and you have his powers because he forged the ring and has similar powers to Celebrimbor. They, they could do it that way. Uh, they could also do it as just like the first act. Either, like you could lose Celebrimbor and then for the next um, couple of hours you're going to get Celebrimbor back. You get him back and then you get most of your powers. And that that's kind of a way to introduce new players in the game. You kind of have the basic Talion powers and then they introduce Celebrimbor and suddenly you have more powers. They could also use it as a way, as a reason for why you're underpowered. Video games constantly like to take away everything that you got in the previous game. I know Assassin's Creed is seriously, like, the, the, the whole Ezio trilogy, you'd get, you'd figure out how to jump, and then there was one game where you, uh, not how to jump, where you, yeah, where you had a, a new figure, you figured out how to jump while climbing buildings, and then the next game they took that away, and the only way you could jump while climbing buildings is if you had this weird claw thing, which was stupid in my opinion. I, you know, if, if he's not going to be able to jump, just say he's too old to figure it out. Don't just take it away and then make it a problem like that. It's just, that's just stupid. Okay. So additionally, we see a Balrog. He appears in the trailer. And that's leading me to think that you get to fight a Balrog. Which wouldn't be too far-fetched. I mean, there definitely was uh, some beast battles. There were some trolls. There was a bigger troll in Shadow of Mordor. So obviously the next step up would be a Balrog, and since you're a half Wraith, half undead guy, which is basically a Wraith, what a Wraith is, but they're different. 
When you're those two things, you could probably fight a Balrog. Either that, or you could probably run away from a Balrog. That is also very likely that you don't actually fight it. You just have to not die. Uh, also, there's a, fl uh, a lady with like floating hair, and her hair is like Wah! all over the place in the beginning of the video, and then at the very end. I have no fucking clue who that is. The most I could guess, and this is 100% not right, is Galadriel kind of shows up in people's visions and dreams, and she says some stuff in the beginning of uh, the Fellowship of the Ring. But if it was Galadriel, that'd just be kind of stupid because her hair is supposed to be gold. That's kind of Galadriel thi Gla Galadriel's thing. If there's any description about who Galadriel is, it's that she has like gold hair, you know? But I do admit my Lord of the Rings knowledge is kind of rusty. So if you know, if you recognize who it is, if you've seen the trailer and you know who that is, uh, go down in the comments and let me know because I would like to know. Because that, that could be a pretty important plot point is knowing who that person is. Now, another interesting thing is both Baradur and Minas Morgul. God, <laughs> I don't know why I just butchered those names. Baradur and Minas Morgul appear in the trailer as well. And hopefully these are, and I wrote, visit visitable areas. So I hope they're visitable. That would be very exciting. And what I meant to write is visitable. Of course, in Shadow of Mordor, we got a lot of the uh, fortresses, quote unquote, but they are pretty small. They were very broken up. It would be very exciting to visit an actual kind of um, citadel. Baradur in the video, uh, well, both in the video and in the Lord of the Rings, is a very big fortress, and that'd be very exciting to have a lot more climbing options, a lot more um, areas to explore that are fortress-related, a lot more sneaking around in that kind of environment. That, that would be exciting. I would be definitely up for that. And Minas Morgul looks like it could be a similar, maybe less climbing, could be just something that you go real quickly to, and it's not really a huge plot point, because it is kind of out of the way if you look at a map of Mordor, it's kind of out of the way of the area that they're obviously going for, which is the Mount Doom area, uh, uh, which I forgot to talk about. Of course, in the video, they're in Mount Doom, and my guess is you start out in Mount Doom, which is why I'm guessing that uh, you lose Celebrimbor from the beginning, and then you get him back like a couple hours in and get your powers. Okay, so I got my camera plugged in. I don't know why I didn't plug it in to begin with, because obviously it's going to die because the battery sucks on this thing, and hopefully the microphone is uh, at a good position and I don't sound terrible. But I'll find out when I do the audio and then I'll be really disappointed and depressed. So, where the hell was I? Oh yeah, I was talking about Mount Doom. So Mount Doom, I'm hoping is going to be an explorable area. I'm guessing it's probably where you start out and then you lose Kel Brimbor, of course, and he's gone for a couple hours and then you get him back and blah, blah, blah. Baradur is obviously very close to Mount Doom, so let's talk about that real quick. Uh, Baradur is probably... I, well, I did say it, it. Hopefully, it's a visible area, and I wouldn't be surprised if that is the last thing you visit. But I also would not be surprised if some of the outlying part of the city was the first place you visit, or well, the place right. Well, one of the first places. Perhaps that's where Kel Brimbor is being held, or actually, maybe he's being held in Minas Morgul. Now I think about it, that would certainly, but that would take a long. That would take a lot of work, so I don't know. That that would, if he was hanging out in Minas Morgul, then that would be the case of you don't get him until almost the end of the game, or at least the first half of the game. So, addition, uh, like I said, Baradur, there probably is for the for the most part, it's probably going to be the last place you visit. I'm sure that because it's if you do start out in Mount Doom, then some of the areas around Baradur will be visitable. Like some of the just very outlying city, maybe you can go into the city a little bit, or maybe there's some villages outside, you can kind of get a look. Oh, I skipped right over that. Okay, so another city that is in the in the trailer that I did not mention that is clearly of Gondoran design. You see some Gondorans, Gondorans, I don't know what the fuck they're called. You see them hanging out, and they're looking at Mount Doom, and they're seeing some stuff going on, and they're like, oh my god, it's Mount Doom is doing stuff. I'm guessing that that is Kirith, uh, um, Kirith Ungle. I believe it's called. So most likely you'll have to travel through there um, in order to get to Minas Morgul. I don't know if you'll, when you tra when you travel through there, the people will still be alive. It looks like maybe there's a war going on at the time, so there might be some people there, and you uh, follow up with them. That'd be kind of neat. 
to have uh, a bit more people in the game. Shadow of Mordor, there definitely was some people that you interacted with, but for the most part, it was just kind of really you and that dwarf guy. You know, just based on the design of it and based on where it, like, uh, w when you're looking at it, and then there's the scene where the people are looking out at Mount Doom and there's kind of like this rocky pass. If you look at a map of Mordor, it looks like that's Kirith Ungol. There's also another place farther up, like here's here's a map of Mordor, there's Baradur, there's Mount Doom, and there's another place over here, I can't remember what it's called, but I don't know if that place will be visitable. Maybe that's the first place you go to? Who knows? I don't really know. This is all based off of like a two minute trailer. So it's also possible that Mount Doom will be the last place you visit, or the second to last place right before you go to Baradur, and in that case, you won't, you, there's a potential that you lose Celebrimbor at the very end of the game. Maybe you even go fight the main villain without Celebrimbor. That'd be an interesting fight because suddenly your power, you have a lot less power, but you have the ring of power. So who knows what could happen. All right, so that's pretty much everything that I have been able to um, guess based on the trailer. Now I'm going to talk about what we do know is in the game for certain. So this game is taking place entirely in Mordor. There's nothing else. It's it's clearly not going to be outside of Mordor. Maybe we'll have some kind of flashback to a time when he was on the edge of Mordor. But this is obviously another game about Mordor. I kind of hoped that there would be more places to explore. Like maybe we go out into Gondor. We go to Esgiliath. We go to Minas Tirith. Um, that would have been exciting. I mean, it is called Middle Earth first off. First off, I talked about that before. Middle Earth, Shadow of whatever the fuck. So it would, be, it would be exciting to see more of these places in game form because it's clear to me that these games are partially about exploring these places in War of the Rings. We of course ex uh, explored the Black Gate kind of area um, in the first game and now we're exp uh, exploring the whole uh, Baradur, Mount Doom, Hopefully, Minas Mor probably Minas Morgul areas, which would be exciting. Those are pretty big, uh, important parts of the movies, and it would be exciting to go to those places. What else do I have? The Nemesis system, of course, is returning with improvements. Supposedly, the environment themselves will be shaped by our actions, which the only thing I can guess that that would cause is uh, perhaps you do something, you kill some bad guys, and then Kirith Ungol isn't destroyed by people as quickly. Or maybe some people are alive and some people aren't. Maybe some things are destroyed and some things aren't. Honestly, that's all I can think of that, that could shape. Who knows, maybe there's a rock there and then there's not a rock there because he, cause he did something. I don't really know. Uh, Sauron is the ultimate ba bad guy this time. So I was telling you about that there's a ultimate villain. It's going to be Sauron. Which... Uh, because Sauron is going to be the bad guy, and also the Ring Rays are going to be the supporting bad guys, for the uh, the Black Hand was of course the main villains in the last game, and then there was the guy who killed your family, who is the ultimate villain you're trying to get to. So the Ring Rays are the guys you got to kill to get to Sauron, is my guess. I hope that it's not just the same kind of thing, because especially since the Ring Rays are pre all pretty much the same, there's not a lot you can do with them. The Witch King, he's a little different. He's got a mace, but everybody else has swords. You know, some maybe sometimes a riding Nazgul. I don't know, but we'll see what they do with it. But because these guys are the bad guys, this my guess is this is the last Middle Earth game that we're going to see with Talion as the main protagonist. Maybe Celebrimbor will show up real quick in a previous game, but I think, and it's possible, maybe they'll explore more with Talion after this. But based on where it's set, I mean, it's set between The Hobbit and it's set between The Lord of the Rings. So, I can't remember how much time, what was that, like 40 years, 50 years? It was a lot of, there was a lot of time between those, between those two storylines. So, I mean, obviously Talion could go do something, but I would not be surprised if this was his last game. And I also would not be surprised that if this game does well, or does okay, that they make another one. Because the first one was, made a ton of money, and... That's really the driving. That's really the driving thing to making another game is making a ton of money. 
Uh, and March 8th, we'll get some more gameplay. So that, of course, will be next week, and I'll talk about that next week, and I'll tell you about what I think of the gameplay. Maybe we'll get some, if we get more storyline stuff, I'll let you know about that. But overall, that's pretty much everything we know about this game so far. Um, honest, I, I am very excited about this. I've been waiting for this game to come out a while. A, f a few weeks ago, there was a rumor that WB was going to be uh, announcing a new video game. And of course, it was uh, the speculation was either it was going to be another Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, it was going to be a Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor sequel, or it was going to be another Arkham Batman video game. And it was Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor sequel, which is fine with me. I think either way it would have been good, but I don't know. I think I'm right now I'm ready for another Middle Earth game because we only got one. We got tons of Arkham games. You know, it's time to release another War of the Rings game that is good and doesn't feel really disappointing like the uh, Hobbit movies did. Based on what I've witnessed from War of the Rings games, they seem to just kind of get better every time. Like, you look back on uh, all the games that came out, the first ones were terrible, and then every time, it didn't even have to be the same studio, it was just every time a new War of the Rings game came out, it was a little bit better than the previous one. Some people can probably argue that, uh, oh crap, War of the Rings, more in the north, was not very good, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a pretty good game. So, and I, I think it was better than the previous game, but that's probably because I really like RPGs. And I also really enjoyed uh, uh, War of the Rings The Third Age. That was a really great game. I replayed it a little bit a few months ago, and it's still really good. Hard to look at on the PS2 because it looks so terrible, but it's a good game nonetheless. All right, so I'm going to leave that off for today. I am, of course, working on the next Cantina video. I've been talking about this for a while. I don't know when it's going to get done because I've been kind of held back by uh, schoolwork, college work that I have to do. But I'm trying to do these as much as possible to make up for it. I know this obviously does not make up for it because it's a very different kind of format. But at least I'm producing something and you guys can watch it in the meantime and I can tell you what's going on about you know where that's at so if you haven't subscribed make sure you subscribe right now especially if you want to find out more about what I've witnessed for the gameplay trailer and of course like I said if you want to watch the trailer for this uh, video game it's gonna be down in the description so go head down check that out if you haven't seen it already if you have I want to hear if there's anything that I missed or anything that has been confirmed that I just didn't mention on because you know it's possible for me to miss stuff yeah I'm only human I know it seems like, you know, I'm, I'm set above, but I'm really not. I'm also very forgetful, so if I don't write it down, then I'm not going to remember it. So I will see you guys next week. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said. Don't forget to like, and if you want to talk about stuff, head down in the comments, and I will get right back to you, and we can have a discussion because I love discussions, and that's kind of why I make these videos is really to have discussions with you guys. I talk about it in the video, and then you talk about it in the comments, and then I reply to your comment, and you tell, them, tell me I'm stupid, and then I go cry about it for a little bit, and then I reply, or maybe I'll just give you a like. It's probably too much information. I will see you guys next week.